Good afternoon. I've been asked to talk about maladaptive daydreaming and what exactly that is. I know there are a lot of people online searching, wondering if they have this or not. Um, now first, it's, it's an emerging condition. We don't know a whole lot about it yet. It's only been studied a couple times, so we're still learning a lot. So I'm going to talk about some of the symptoms that we think we know about, but if you don't have them, that doesn't mean you necessarily don't have it. Because um, the only way we know about these symptoms is people come forward and share their stories. So if you think you have maladaptive daydreaming or any other condition, I would encourage you to go to join one of the wonderful online forums we have out there. There are lots of groups. If you Google maladaptive daydreaming, you'll find plenty of them. There's my website. You're welcome to join. You can blog, share your feelings. You don't, I mean, there's lots of information that you can read about people's stories and how how it's affected them. And you can see if it fits you. And you can, you know, share whatever's on your mind. You don't have to have it to join. You can just be curious or just need to talk about anything. It's, it's fine. There's also a Yahoo group that has a lot of members. Um, talking about it really helps. Even if you don't end up having it. And um, also that's the only way we were... Well, that and the wonderful studies that are being done right now. It's it's That's how we're figuring out these symptoms. So you may have a symptom that somebody else has been too scared to talk about because a lot of us are really shy to talk about it it's for some reason we grow up with this feeling like we're doing something bad because we're lying around daydreaming or pacing our rooms daydreaming and we're really not I mean of all the addictions out there I mean meth addicts go in they hurt people you know heroin addicts they may ab abandon their children or do who knows what else but um daydreamers, we tend to be kind of inactive. We may ignore people a bit, but it's it's relatively harmless. So please don't feel too guilty if you have it. The, the person you're hurting the most is yourself, and most of that hurt is through your d judgment by thinking you're a bad person just because you daydream too much. And anyway, Maladaptive daydreaming is a condition where people become addicted to daydreaming. And some people do a little bit. Some people go on major daydreaming binges where they'll be daydreaming for days and days or hours and hours and um, they really can't stop. So it usually starts out either as a creative endeavor Maybe you're just a really creative person and you kind of start thinking of scenarios in your head that might make a cool story and then you just get into it more and more and the storyline gets good and it's like a soap opera and you just can't turn it off. A lot of it starts as an escape. A lot of people have gone through trauma and so they need to get away to a world that's where they feel safe. And for me, I honestly don't know what caused it. Because I've been doing this, I'm a lifer. I've been doing this as far back as I can remember. Meaning, I mean, toddlerhood. So, uh, I mean, I don't remember any specific trauma. I know I had kind of a lunatic, crazy biological mother and family that was really unstable and, you know, really kind of volatile and screaming and whatnot. I don't know if that caused it or if it just pushed me further into it. I don't know. Um, they kind of, those two forces fed off each other as I grew up. Anyway, people start at various ages. Some people have been doing it most of their lives. It's, I've only met a couple who have, though, me and a few others. Um, it seems a lot of people start either when they're a kid and something bad happens, or maybe they're a teenager and something bad happens, or they just are tired of people and they need an escape. Some people start when they're older, so don't think you're alone if you have. I've met plenty of people online who have. Maybe they've just been, you know, working their lives, working their fingers to the bone, and they just, for whatever reason, whatever age, they start to daydream, they start to build a fantasy world where things feel better, things feel safe. A lot of times it involves an idealized version of yourself. 
a that involves some central character who may or may not feel like you. It may just be a really cool character, but who's just basically perfect and does everything you know you want to be able to do and um, they're smart, they're funny, they can talk to people, and they maybe they're famous, um, you know. And it becomes, like I said, kind of like a really great soap opera, and it's just really hard to turn it off. Things get interesting, you get more and more ideas, and it's a really wonderful creative process. And um, it comes with a lot of benefits, as well as the negative things that most of us, that sent us to the Google to figure out what was wrong, quote unquote, with us. And, uh, I mean, I've had some wonderful, enriching daydreams. It's really been a, a great thought process. I mean, I'm sorry, but there are a lot of stupid people out there, <laughs> to be blunt. And it's hard to have the kind of in-depth conversations in the real world that I can just have in my head where I can just let myself think and think and think and my character always finds somebody really smart to talk to and you can't do that in the real world. <laughs> you can't find somebody who wants to talk about what you desperately need to work out and think about. And you can't find somebody who necessarily wants to, you know, baby you and talk about your issues always. And even therapists aren't always sympathetic and they cost a lot of money. So, in this fantasy world, you can get a great support system. You can think really well. Mia, yeah, be good. Um, and it can be a wonderful, beautiful, creative thing. And anyway, the problem is, at some point, it becomes kind of excessive. For me, it was always kind of excessive. Mia's looking at my hand. Hi, Mia. Um, and you just you start doing it more and more and it starts to interfere with your lives. And so that's how it kind of becomes a problem. It doesn't have to be a huge problem. If you start to recognize this, you can try and nip it in the bud. It doesn't have to take over your life, like it did for me growing up. But um, yeah, it's important to recognize when it becomes excessive and if it starts to interfere with your life. Okay, also, it can interfere with your relationships. Um, if you're having trouble getting along with your family or whatever, if you're having a problem, you may find the support system is in, in your imaginary world is so great that you just you rather talk to them than to than to work things out with your family or whatever. And you may find the conversations like I did so enriching that you don't want to go talk to the people out there who aren't making any sense, you know, and it can, it can cause problems socially. You, you may not, de you know, develop the bonds that you would otherwise, as was the case with me. So just be aware of that. And so basically, um, you start to daydream too much, you might have an idealized version of yourself. Some people, a lot of people do it while pacing their room or having some sort of movement. I do it kind of all the time. I do it before I go to bed and before I get up and then, you know, throughout the day pretty much kind of all the time. You know, I'm going in and out. But that's what happens when you've been doing it as long as I have and it's been a problem for as long as I have. And so it can be a wonderful healthy thing. Um, if it starts to get too much, then you know, maybe it's time to start doing what the rest of us are doing and just try and find some answers. And a lot of people find that they have triggers. Certain things will make them go into their daydream world. And there's, you know, a lot of people have, you know, music as a trigger, TV can be a trigger, um, walking. When I go on long walks, I can't stop daydreaming. It's hard to say. I mean, we're we're still kind of pooling our information together on this, but pay attention to yourself. Pay attention if something happens and you go into a daydream world, or you, you go into your fantasy. It doesn't have to be one world. It can be something different. Whatever it is for you, be aware if something triggers that. And a lot of people 
and just, you know, learn how to combat that. Like, if music always makes you daydream, some people have, you know, stopped listening to music as much, or maybe they'll listen to it in public, so they'll be too embarrassed to daydream. Um, that doesn't work for me, because I really can't stop <laughs> daydreaming. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess be aware of your triggers. Try and limit them, or, you know, if sitting on the computer makes you daydream, maybe take your laptop out to public or you'll be too embarrassed to daydream. Um, it's really, it's so new that it's kind of up to us to figure out the answers. So, and that's another benefit of, gen of joining a forum is you can kind of brainstorm together and you can read other people's ideas. We've got a wonderful discussion on my forum, what helps, and people just kind of, I posted some questions and they kind of just brainstorm the answers and you can go there and read it and see if maybe one of those things will help you as well or if something does help if you know be it a medication or be it just an activity or a book or whatever list it maybe somebody else will benefit from it and so it's a good way to get out of your head and that's the whole thing for most of us is that we're kind of stuck in our own heads sometimes I think it's really hard to get out so, um, yeah, joining an online forum is a great way to get, get these thoughts out and see, so and, um, yeah. And be aware that if you're not careful, even if it's okay right now, if you're not careful, it can become excessive, it can be too much, and it can have some pretty bad consequences. So if you just learn to handle it now before it does, then... You know, maybe we can one day all of us learn to live the best of both worlds and not let it be a huge problem for everyone. Also, if it does kind of take over your life, please don't feel guilty. Um, I've read some stuff online where it kind of it judges people a little bit where who've had it take over their lives, like me. Um, somebody, I think, on my forum wrote something implying that, you know. It could take over your life and how sad that is. Well, I've been doing it since I was a baby. So how do you tell a baby they let themselves go? That's what I say. You know, um, it's an addiction. We do our best to work it out. Um, don't judge yourself. That's not going to help anything. And, um, yeah, just, just, keep, just keep working on it. You know, enjoy the beauty of it and learn to manage it. And, um, yeah. So, okay, well, I've been rambling far too much, and Mia's staring at me about to jump and scream, make me scream. So I'm going to let you guys go. Um, please message me if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to talk about or help with. Uh, I'm never too far away. Good luck.